Hey everybody, I am Sarah Donaworth, an artist living in California, and this is my Pink Tiny House. So welcome to the tiny house. Uh, this is it, all 252 square feet of it. Um, I am on an eight foot by 24 foot trailer. And um, I add a little bit extra space with the sleeping loft. I have been very purposeful about how I decorated the space. I know it's probably way too much pink for some of y'all, but I have really enjoyed um, creating an environment that just feels creative and joyful and upbeat. It's that, it's that perfect color to just kind of make you smile. So I'm fully a fan of putting the things that you really love on display and I knew I was never going to achieve the level of minimalism that a lot of people in tiny houses do because like I've definitely like I toured a house and I was like oh this is nice like it's new right and they're like no no someone lives here I'm like there's no stuff anywhere in the house like I'm not gonna go through drawers but like it sure seems like nobody lives here because it doesn't feel lived in have this little study or work area with a desk and it's actually a secretary desk and it looks almost like identical to one that my grandmother has and up here I have um, some shelves that I've put above it where I can display different things um, it's a lot of the stuff that I look at that makes me feel just really inspired for example <laughs> the Queen of England as a Funko Pop. Like, that's just hilarious to me. Welcome to the living room, guys. Uh, so I have a beautiful bay window um, that usually has the blackout curtains down because um, otherwise you can see from the street, like literally all the way through to my bathroom. Um, but it's okay, because it creates this nice little alcove. The dogs love to sit up there and just sort of like sleep and nap and play with their toys. And um, it's become this sort of like almost gallery for me. And then I <laughs> feel like my love of throw pillows is also kind of one of the things that makes me grandma chic, but I always have like a fun twist to them where it's like pink llamas. Did you know they put pink llamas on throw pillows? Yeah, I also have a uh, side table right here. It's a C shape so I can actually slide it further into the couch if I need some more space right here and uh, it's where I drink my coffee and I eat all my meals. So uh, you'll see that, yeah, I don't have a, a kitchen table or a dining table, um, but I do have this, and I think it's much more cozy and comfy. A couple of things about my tiny house. It's 100% movable, but I would need a one and a half ton truck in order to move it, and I don't have that. But the plan is to get a bigger piece of property where I could actually um, add a decorative terrace to it, or potentially um, even like a greenhouse I thought would be really fun to have it leaning on to the side of the house um, where I can have some, some plants because I'm be rapidly becoming the crazy plant lady. Um, water comes from the house next to me. It gets pumped in, uh, works just like a normal plumbing system. Um, I have a composting toilet, so I don't need to worry about like black water, but I do have gray water going back to that house. This is the water intake. Um, it is actually behind the emergency escape ladder from the second story window. Uh, so then this is the gray water hose. And then here we have the utility closet. It's on the back side of the house. Um, And this is where the power cord goes in. And then it's also where all of my solar panel systems are. And the battery bank. And of course, who doesn't love a pink extension cord? Okay, so this is a tight shot, but I just wanted you guys to see, this is my entire closet. The fortunate part is that we kind of double that space by having a bar up here and a bar down there. So one of my favorite spaces in the tiny house is actually the kitchen. It's where I do a lot of the artwork and some cooking. Um, 
basically it's a great place for me to have my kitchen items on display um, I absolutely love these like pink little gnome mugs that I found um, one day and I have a pink toaster oven because yes they make those um, but because I'm not huge on cooking I actually have the stove covered most of the time in a tray which buys me a little bit more counter space I have a microwave um, Actually, I have an ice cream maker too, right there. And then I have, of course, art supplies and a mini fridge. So the sink is a farmhouse sink. It's very deep. It's always full of dishes, because again, it's just not my thing. Having a creative space is really important to me, and I all it also was really important to have all of my art supplies at my fingertips so that I could actually paint. Because um, a lot of the solutions I was finding online for like tiny house living as an artist or a hobbyist is to like take it all out, do the hobby, pack it all up. And that just wasn't gonna work for me because I do work a little at a time and a little at a time and a little at a time basically every day. And I don't want the bulk of my time to be spent taking things out and putting things away. So I have an art pantry that I can very easily reach all of my paint colors and my brushes and everything. And um, I'm sure it was meant for food because a normal person would put food in a pantry, but I have art supplies, so. There you go. And then I also keep my easel out on the uh, kitchen counter because when I wanna paint, I need it to be right there. So this is honestly not the easiest place to film in, but I did want you guys to get a quick look at uh, the loft bedroom. Basically, uh, the bed takes up 80% of the space. Uh, my camera is actually sitting on the bookshelf that serves as a wall. So instead of having a wall where no air can get through, I actually have a bookshelf. So although it's extra storage space for my books, there is still gaps at the top of each um, little unit that can let the air flow through, which is like a godsend in the summer because it gets very warm up here first before it gets very warm everywhere else. <laughs> so on the walls behind me are actually two antique carriage lamps um, that may or may not have been on a horse-drawn carriage. Then directly above me, I actually wallpapered the ceiling. I don't recommend it, it was not easy. I have the composting toilet and I can use it if I need to, um, but the long-term plan is that I can put a traditionally plumbed toilet in there once I have my own land and my own lot um, because nobody really wants to deal with a composting toilet long term. The uh, hot water heater is actually behind um, a little corner piece. Uh, so as far as like the decor for that room, um, I decided that I wanted to carry the pink in a little bit so I carried it in with the vanity. Um, so then here's the part where everyone swoons of course in this tiny house. And then you can see that I also have, uh, thanks to command strips, I have all my cleaning supplies in one place, and then I have all the jewelry and stuff up above. So I'm just gonna take a second to talk about the, you know, nitty gritty details of financing. The model that I selected, the Heritage from Summit Tiny Homes, um, retails at about 55,000 um, as the base model. Uh, now I did add some things to it that made it a little bit pricier. And so uh, we actually ended up, I believe about $80,000 um, total. And so then I had to bring it in from Canada and that's where things got a little bit pricier because I had to pay the sales tax on the entire retail price of the tiny house right up front in order to register it at the DMV. So um, that added on about another $8,000. Um, in my area, it is between $1,200 and $2,000 for an apartment. <laughs> like, you don't even own the ground that you live on and it's $1,200 to $2,000. So the tiny house actually costs me only $1,000 a month and it's gonna be paid off in five years. I'm gonna own it flat out. Um, and on top of that, I'm even paying it off a little bit sooner um, because I want to be able to put it on its own property and have it be its own 
uh, place instead of parking it on someone else's land. So I'm actually able to save up for the land at the same time that I'm paying this off, which is super great because as soon as this is free and clear, we're gonna park it somewhere amazing. Um, so yeah, but it just really was not doable for me to be um, like in an apartment in this area. It just would kind of have been a constant like bleed on my finances. And so by thinking just a little bit out of the box and kind of coming up with this creative solution, I'm not only saving money, but I'm also building something that I'm gonna own at the end instead of just kind of paying rent to someone else my whole life. Um, I'm sure it's probably higher in price Point than a lot of other people's tiny homes but at the end of the day um, I knew that I did not have the capabilities to like install my own electrical and stuff like that so I kind of feel like the price is worth it because I didn't have to risk you know electrocution in order to make it happen um, and I was able to really get uh, a tiny home that will grow with me because um, if I decide to take up cooking, I have a kitchen that the functionality can expand to meet that need. Um, the bathroom I've designed so that um, I can go from a composting toilet to a tradi traditional toilet depending on where I park it. Oh, so I like the fact that this tiny house is made to be converted later in life um, and that it's going to be with me for more than just the foreseeable future. Uh, I feel like if that is the investment that you go into with thinking that I'm going to be in this for a long time, then you actually are saving considerable amounts of money because after five years, I'm basically without any really rent or anything like that. I've been really slow at moving in and moving around and I feel like it's probably gonna end up being a never-ending process of finding out how things work in here um, because I've noticed that things tend to the more you use them creep out of their cupboards a little bit and onto the counter space and the, the table space and stuff like that so probably like once a month I'll do a deep clean where everything has to go all the way back to the cupboards and we start fresh tiny house living has just been like everything that I pictured and wanted and more. I feel like everything is at your fingertips, but I don't feel claustrophobic or tight. Instead, I'm just like, okay, it's it's just the amount of space that you need. It's really the Mary Poppins, enough is as good as a feast. The tiny house was delivered and I saw it and it looked like 10 times bigger than it ever had um, in the warehouse at Summit Tiny Homes. And I was like, whoo, this is real, this is happening. Okay, it actually is backed into a parking spot and it is so tight and I had to watch it go in and I'm just sitting there going, oh my gosh, it barely fits. Fortunately, the driver was actually able to back it in for me and we had like this much clearance on either side I still don't know how we're gonna get the tiny house out if I ever move it, but it's in and it's perfect and I love it. So one of the things that's really unique to my situation is I have dogs. It's been kind of an adjustment for them as much as it's been an adjustment for me. They've had to acclimate to the smaller space for sure. So uh, we've had to figure out how to have playtime in a way that works for everyone. We've had to figure out how to um, kind of get them on more of a schedule and a routine so that they know what to expect. And we've had to, to set some boundaries like, no, the loft is not your play area. It's a sleeping area only. <sighs> and even as I said, <laughs> the loft is not a play area. Both boys seemingly wanted to be in this scene too. So I hope you guys loved the tour of the Pink Tiny House. Uh, if you want to see more of it, you can follow on Instagram at Pink Tiny House, um, or there's also a YouTube channel uh, for the Pink Tiny House as well, where I do uh, vlogs about all sorts of different tiny house living things. Um, <laughs> I also share my art online at saradonawards.com, um, so I hope that we can connect and see you guys soon. Bye!